Hey everybody, it's me again. I'm going to do another reaction to a geography video. I started off with Argentina because I was making lots of Argentinian music reactions, and I thought, well, I might as well work my way around South America, eh? Uh, I've gone back to the playlist on this channel, Geography Now. The link will be down below if you want to go and sub that fella up for uh, making such cool videos, and uh, hopefully he's okay with me reacting to them. I don't know what the laws are on reacting to people's videos. Do you have to ask for permission? I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do Bolivia. Bolivia. What do I know about Bolivia before we start? It's in South America. Um, it, I think it borders on Argentina. Um, it begins with a B. <laughs> I don't know much about Bolivia, I've got to admit. I'm guessing there's going to be some factors which are similar to like Argentina, like the Spanish coming over and... Uh, you know, taking over. Uh, indigenous people have probably been, um, you know, not treated as well as they could be, as what happens if every country that gets uh, overtaken by outside influences. Um, but yeah, let's just, uh, I don't know what their flag looks like even. I couldn't, I couldn't hazard a guess. Um, let's have a quick, let's have, yeah, let's watch the video, shall we? Let's watch the video and find out some information. Because uh, that's the whole point of doing this. <laughs> well, here we go. Geography now, Bolivia. I actually had the pleasure of going to Bolivia a couple of years ago, so in this episode, you're going to see some of the great footage that I took with my crappy 2010 Panasonic camcorder. Ooh. It's time to learn geography now! Oh, we are so gonna bo live it up in Bolivia. Ha! Flag time. Yeah, I could do about the silly jokes. <laughs> Mind you, what am I saying? I make silly jokes all the time. All right, yeah, now I know. Now I know how you guys feel watching my silly jokes. All right, another flag that has a lot of things to look at. Let's see if we can do this faster than Belize's flag, shall we? First of all, the flag is a horizontal tricolor flag with three bands, red, yellow, and green, with the coat of arms in the center. The red represents, once again, say it with me, the blood shed for those who fought for the country. The yellow represents the wealth of resources, and the green represents the richness of natural areas and hope. The coat of okay. arms is a little more complex. First of all, in the center is wow. a cartouche image of Mount Potosi with the sun rising over it, with a llama, a palm tree, and a bale of wheat representing the nation's resources, surrounded by a blue border with 10 stars representing the nine departments and the 10th former province, Litoral, which was taken by Chile in the 1800s. Finally, you have the name of Bolivia above. Then you have six Bolivian flags on either side, once again making Bolivia one of the few countries that has a flag with miniature versions of its own flag on its own flag. Then you have the four muskets in the back with two cannons in front representing the struggle and fight for independence. On top of the cannons, you have a Phrygian hood and an representing liberty and freedom. On top of everything, you have a condor and laurel branches that stand for peace and the willingness to defend. Keep in mind... Did you notice how his voice changed then? He missed a bit out and he had to drop it in. You can see always tell when... Because uh, I've done that lots of times. He's like various things that I've been making, you've forgotten something, and you, you've had to change something, and you uh, you do it on a different device, and the, the, the volume is, is not the same. <laughs> I recognise that mistake. That was a busy flag, wasn't it? There was so much going on on that flag. Wow. Muskets and pikes and blinking condors and bales of hay and llamas and uh, stars and, yeah, interesting. We're gonna, I think we're going to find out about some war with Chile because Chile took one of their provinces at one point. You also might see this flag a lot in Bolivia, also known as the Huipala, which is also kind of seen as a national symbol, but could also be referenced towards indigenous, the indigenous people of yeah. Bolivia, and more specifically the Aymara people, which make up a huge population demographic of the country. Did we do it? Did we beat? I think I saw that flag before, actually. I think when I was researching Argentina at one point, I saw that flag or something like that. I'm sure I remember seeing that recently, but... Uh... Belize? All right, Bolivia, you are in the lead as the most complex flag that we have done here on Geography Now. Congrats. Well done, Bolivia. You have a complex Bolivia flag. Bolivia is a very interestingly situated country, and to kind of understand it, you have to travel back in time. But later, not now. First off, today Bolivia is landlocked, located in South America, bordered by five other countries, Peru, Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, and Chile. The country has very meticulously surveyed borders with every single one of its neighbor countries, and that's kind of partially because they kind of had a lot of wars with every single one of them. Even little Paraguay? Oh, especially Paraguay. That little dude knows how to fight. Now, here's the thing. In the past, Bolivia actually had a lot more land than it did today. In fact, in the past, it had a province called Litoral, which is what the 10th star on the flag is referring to, which was the 
only area that Bolivia had access to the ocean. Long story ah. short, Chile got that part, Brazil took these parts, and Paraguay got this part. So anyway, Bolivia wow. was divided into nine regions, and technically it had... I feel sorry for them now. <laughs> Poor Bolivia. I hope, they don't, I hope they're not nursing any grudges. Uh, they probably are. But let's hope they're not going to have any more wars about it. Shame they haven't got that coastal bit, though. I think they should, you know, can they not have, like, an agreement with Chile to get literal back so they've got some beachside, uh, you know, going on? You don't want to be completely landlocked, do you? Uh, you want a bit of seaside, didn't you? But I don't suppose that will happen. Has two capitals, La Paz, also known by its official name, Nuestra Señora de La Paz, which means Our Lady of Peace, and Sucre, which means... Sugar. sugar. It's a little hard to explain, but essentially Sucre is the constitutional capital where the Supreme Court is located, but La Paz is where all the seats of government reside. The okay. legislative executive branch. You know what? I don't think I've heard of those towns before. La Paz and Sucre. Doesn't ring any bells. If someone said to me, what's the capital of Bolivia? I wouldn't have had a bloody clue, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'll have to remember that. Next time I do a, a geography, see if I can see if I can guess the name of the capital. But yeah, I had no, no idea. La Paz. La Paz sounds slightly familiar, but now I wouldn't have been able to guess that. The two capitals are both found in the city, and even the president resides in the Palacio Quemado Palace in La Paz. And since China took over Tibet, that made La Paz the world's highest capital at about 12,000 feet or 3,700 oh. meters above sea level. The height is so extreme that typically visitors might find themselves short of breathing and might experience altitude sickness, in which the Bolivians will be happy to provide you with coca leaves, not cocoa leaves, coca leaves, as a remedy. You can either make it into a tea or chew them up raw and dried. Water also boils at a different temperature at about 88 degrees celsius which wow. makes things typically take a little bit longer to cook also the air pressure is so light here that many plasma tvs don't even why would it take it longer to cook you think it would cook quicker because the water would boil quicker surely if it's so would it not get hotter than 88 degrees well it gets to 88 degrees and then it boils and then it's not hot enough to actually cook the stuff that makes sense the yeah because the, the heat isn't hot enough. even though it's boiling you put rice in it or whatever it's not hot enough to cook the rice as quickly i see that's interesting. So it's not the boiling of the water that does it, it's the temperature the water boils at, which does the cooking, of course. That makes more sense. Yeah, I forgot about that, but different pressures, different, um, uh, whatever. Yeah, just pressure, isn't it? It just makes water boil at different temperatures. It's kind of like, it's like a fact that if you didn't know it, you wouldn't guess it, you know? So how, what if you up on a plane, can you, I mean, what temperature, that's really weird, that, isn't it? it? Kind of like, it seems counterintuitive. Why does water boil at different temperatures at different uh, altitudes? That's crazy. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, huh? <laughs> One of those facts that is easy to forget. Work, and it has to do with some kind of sciencey reason about the phosphor pods being lit by electrodes. I don't know. It's time to learn some chemistry later. La Paz is a beautiful city with a frighteningly majestic snow cap Mount Ilimani overlooking everything in the Southwest. Ilimani. It has a plethora of skyscrapers and monuments. Getting out of La Paz is the tricky part. This glorious urban gem is locked and tucked away in the Andes mountains. So you really only have like two extreme options. If you head West, you have to pass through the driest desert in the world, the Atacama, which looks virtually indistinguishable from the moon at some points with no wow. living plants in sight for miles. And had so they've got the driest desert, that's a karma. They've got the highest um, capital in the world uh, because Tibet was taken over by China. Otherwise, it would have been higher, I'm guessing. Um, okay. Uh, La Paz. La Paz is the capital, which is the highest one. And Sucre is the other one, which is not so high. Okay, so you've got, wow. That doesn't sound like a very inviting place, that dry desert. East, you have to pass through the mountains where you are so high you can literally see the clouds below you as you drive into the tropical Amazon basin. But before you do, you have to go on the Yungas Highway, otherwise known as the Calle del Muerte or the Death Road. The road at its narrowest. Oh, not for me, thank you. I am horrible with heights. I hate heights. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'm not coming to. I'm not coming to Bolivia. <laughs> I wasn't planning on going to Bolivia anyway, but. Yeah, I think I'd just look at pictures. It's only about three meters wide or the width of an actual vehicle and sits over the ledge of a drop well over 600 meters or 2,000 feet with no guardrail. Nonetheless, oh. this road is still technically a two-lane highway that offers traffic to drivers going in each direction. Every few hundred meters, oh. there are shoulder curbs that drivers can use to allow oh. other cars to pass on the opposite side. Every year, it's estimated oh. that about 200 to 300 people die on this road alone. However, it's funny because this one road has actually become a huge tourist destination of Bolivia. <laughs> yeah, the landscape in Bolivia is quite intense. Let's talk about that in... Okay, so Bolivia has... 
I'd have to get out and walk. There's no way I'd drive in a car going down that road. No way whatsoever. Some of the most contrasting landscapes you'll see in all of South America, let alone the world. First of all, about a third of the country is covered in the rocky, dry, snow-capped Andes Mountains to the west and to the east. After traversing the mountains, you enter the hot, humid, wet pampas or rainforest zone. As the most sparsely populated country in all of South America, Bolivia's interior is widely untouched and uncultivated. In fact, Capibara. you can even book your own three-day eco-tour that involves getting your own cabin, food, and doing activities like fishing for piranhas, feeding wild monkeys, interacting with crocodiles, and swimming with pink river dolphins, all for about $70. Yeah, the exchange rate is that good in Bolivia. Otherwise, Pink river dolphins? I've never heard of pink river dolphins before. Piranha, of course. Uh, okay, so yeah. And they haven't mentioned the desert again. Because you've got the driest desert, you've got the rainforest, and you've got the mountains. And it's the least, uh, the most sparsely populated. I suppose because there's not that many places you can actually uh, live. You can't live in the desert. You can't, we can't live in the rainforest, like the um, indigenous people, I suppose. Um, and in the mountains, I guess there's some people, there's some, probably some high, La Paz is high enough as it's, uh, on its own, isn't it? If you stay in the west side, you can still experience some amazing geological anomalies. In the south, in the Potosi province, you reach Salar de Uyuni, the world's largest salt flat. In the dry summer months, this creepishly serene area is a completely flat white salt bed that goes on and on for miles to the ends of the horizon. In the wet winter months, the rains pour down heavily covering the entire area in a shallow watery gloss that you can walk in and respectively becomes the world's largest mirror. Further north, <laughs> closer to the pause, you reach Lake Titicaca, <laughs> lake, the highest lake in the world, which they share with Peru. It's kind of funny. Okay, I've heard of Lake Titicaca, but I never knew who it was, to be honest. I would, if someone said, where's Lake Titicaca? I would have thought it was in America somewhere, but uh, it's in South America. Okay, Bolivia and Peru. Hmm. Funny though, because even though Bolivia doesn't have a coastline, they still have a navy which for the most part patrols over the lakes and the rivers. Agriculture makes up about a quarter of the GDP, even though about 2% of the country is cultivated for crops. Despite the fact that arable land is quite abundant, it's just not used. Cash crops are coffee, cotton, and coca. Not cocoa, coca, the controversial little leaf that when used correctly can help heal sickness and when used destructively can create a little drug known for causing the deaths of many. I'm talking about gin martinis. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about cocaine. No, but seriously, gin martinis are like the worst thing ever. I don't understand why anybody would have... Sorry, this is about Bolivia again. No, but seriously, the coca leaf has been grown in the country for centuries and has actually gotten Bolivia in a lot of heat, even with some of their friends. Friends, oh. we'll discuss about in the friend zone, but first we have to talk about the... People? Demographics. Bolivia's people are pretty much unlike any other people in South America, and here's why. First of all, the country has a little over 10.5 million people, and along with Peru, is one of only two countries in South America in which Amerindians make up the majority, and is the only country in the Americas, let alone the world, in which Amerindians make up over half of the population. Otherwise, about 30% are mestizo, and about 15% are white. In terms of Am so Amerindian, I'm guessing means American Indians, does it? I'm assuming it must, it must, must be a, a portmanteau of American. So if they, Indians of the Americas, I'm guessing. So like the indigenous people of the North America, South America, I suppose they're all called Amerindians now, are they? Um, okay. Um, that's interesting, yeah. It's because so only them and Peru have got um, more than half of like, the original people there still. So that's interesting. It's, glad, it's good that not everywhere has been overtaken by outsiders, you know? Um, it's good that they're still are in charge of their own country sort of thing. Amerindian subdivisions, there are 30 people groups, however, the largest ones are the Quichua, the Aymara, and the Guarani. Most of the Aymaras and Quichuas live in the west, in the Andes mountain range, whereas most of the Guaranis and other Amazon tribal peoples live mostly in the east and in the heavily forested Pampas, which, in addition to Spanish, make up the four official languages of Bolivia. At the end of the day, however, pretty much everybody speaks Spanish. However, Bolivian Spanish is a little different from the standard Mexican or Spain Spanish that most people are taught. In addition to an accent heavily influenced by indigenous languages, a whole different vocabulary vocabulary exists. For example, instead of hearing hombre, you might hear varone. Instead of oh. hearing basura, you might hear chorita. And sometimes niño becomes tili. No tengo dinero. Huh? Estoy yesca? Ah! Now, here's how Bolivia kind of divides itself. Kind of like Belgium, you have two regionally distinct identifiable people groups. The Koyas, or the people who live in the west by the Andes, and the Kambas, or the people that live in the east in the rainforest. I mean, okay. technically, there's a third people group called the Chapacos, who kind of have their own little thing going on, and the people of Tarija identify more with Argentina rather than any people group. But most people fall within the Koya and Kamba categories. I'm not going to remember any of this, but let's carry on. 
These two people groups are quite distinct in their cultures due to the fact that they live completely different lives in completely different atmospheres that they've adapted to. Culture-wise, Bolivia is quite noticeably particular from its neighbors. For one, they are much more heavily influenced by indigenous customs, rituals, and clothing, and even festivals. Interesting side note, you can typically bet on it that a woman is from Bolivia. Sorry, very colorful, very colorful costumes there. And it's, yeah, it looks interesting. Bolivia, if you see her wearing one of those round, small bowler hats, whereas Peruvian women like to wear the Western hats with the flatter brim. Granted, I'm not saying all Peruvian or Bolivian women look like that. I'm just saying it's a very prevalent look in many of the rural areas. Ha! Good we move, get you. Paul. You win this yeah. round, but we're watching you. Another funny side note, if you visit La Paz in El Alto, make sure you buy a ticket to buy the Wrestling Cholita show in <laughs> which women wrestle both men and each other while wearing the traditional clothing. What a great way to make <laughs> friends. Speaking of friends. Wow, interesting. When it comes to diplomatic relations, Bolivia is kind of like, I don't like you, I think. Sure, I saw a documentary once about, like, I think it was in the Andes. I don't know if it was Bolivia or, or Chile. Like, and there's, like, tribes, and they have, like, a festival, and they all get drunk and beat each other up. Like, they have fights. Like, quite, um, yeah, I'm sure I remember seeing some kind of uh, thing like that. They, they, they just start beating the crap out of each other. And I think it was, like, um, I don't know if it's because they drunk too much of this local spirit or something, uh, and they all get a bit rowdy. Uh, whether it was a part of this festival, I can't even remember now. Uh, <laughs> let's go back to but it. But I'll still give you an embassy. First of all, with the exception of Peru, Bolivia's relations with all their immediate neighbors are all kind of strained a little bit. Paraguay, because of the Gran Chaco area dispute that led to war, then you have yeah. Brazil and the Acre War, and Chile with the Pacific War, even Argentina had a few scuffles with Bolivia. Nonetheless, all these countries still have relatively close ties and they all have their own embassies and consulates in Bolivia. Then we get to Israel and things get a little weird because the oh. president doesn't really favor Israel and has threatened to cut ties with them, but many of the Bolivian people are incredibly against this as Israelis make up a huge demographic of the tourism sector. In many places uh, in La Paz, you can even find street signs and posters printed in Hebrew, and many of the locals actually learn how to speak Hebrew to accommodate the visitors. Without okay. these ways, they actually might lose a huge potential in revenue. Bolivia's best new friends might- Why Why does why do Israelis go to Bolivia in particular then? How has that become a thing? Is it, how has that become like a, a favored holiday destination for Israelis? I wonder why. Hmm, just interesting. Maybe they want to see the the the, the mass you know, difference in, in, you know, you've got mountainous regions, you've got forest regions, you've got desert regions, you've got salt flats. Maybe it's the, the, the great variety of uh, things to see, like that deadly dangerous road, the road of death that you wouldn't catch me dead or alive on. <laughs> be Venezuela and Cuba. This is actually kind of new considering that relations weren't really that strong before. The reason has something to kind of do with the fact that they all agree with the same anti-imperialist and socialist ideologies, which is kind of funny considering what happened to Che Guevara. In terms of oh. their old best friend, Bolivia might probably consider Peru. They were even for a short period of time part of the same confederation and fought against Chile together. Peru out of sympathy has even allowed Bolivia to build a port on the ocean on their land that they can use. In conclusion, okay. Bolivia likes to call itself the heart of South America, and considering all the amazing, astounding things that you'll encounter, it's not really hard to believe that saying. They just wish they had a coast. <laughs> Stay tuned, Bosnia yeah. and Herzegovina is coming up next. Okay, not, not on my channel. On his channel, it's Bosnia and Herzegovina next. You can go and watch it on his channel if you like. Uh, I encourage you to go and sub the guy up. He's making interesting videos, although his sense of humor is even worse than mine. <laughs> well, I would say that, of course. But uh, yeah, good, interesting stuff. I mean, I'm not sure how long that's going to stay in my head for. But yeah, another like another country with like vast variety of um, climates. Although it was a more of a compact kind of size compared to Argentina, which like went from way north to, to way south. Uh, it's still it's still a, a great wealth of different. Uh, you know, climate. So didn't it had the rainforest, it had the salt flats, it had the driest desert in the world, it had the highest uh, capital city in the world as well. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, I've, I've learned a few bits there. I'm not sure how much of it will, will stay in my mind. Uh, Sucre and La Paz, that was, I can't remember the name of the highest mountain. I can't remember the name of the desert or the salt flats um, or any of the indigenous peoples. Was it Chulos or something? Shallows. Oh, I can't remember. I've forgotten it already. But I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was uh, the the, uh, the road. The road of death. I'll try and remember that one. Try and remember to avoid it at all costs. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a nice, interesting little video there.
If you want to watch it again without me talking over it, go to the link down below. Go and sub up uh, Geography Now. And, uh, yeah, I'll move on to the next one on the list possibly next week because these are fun. These are interesting to check out. And, uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow uh, or maybe even later today with uh, another video. Cheers for watching. <laughs>